Michelle was like a breath of fresh air. She decided that there must be a microbe out there that causes Lyme disease. Where do you look? You look in the obvious place, in the ticks that bite people. Have a look, there any ticks on you today? We have a look in your ears, come on. Come on, mate, you're a good boy. You're a fellow person. Come on, mate. They're so fragile. Yeah, but it's still mainly my legs. <laughs> I'd have flu-like illnesses, but I got dramatically sort of much worse. Just a pain down, I couldn't move my head, I, my, pain down my back, pain down my arms. You know, I just took to my bed, I was sleeping 20 hours a day. Then the headaches began and the stiffness in the neck. Hi, my chauffeur. Hello. Nine years ago, Thank Terry you. Moore was bitten by a tick and caught Lyme disease, but nobody knew. Sensitivity to sound and, and to light. Were, were a really big problem. I, mean, I, just, I just lay in a dark room and sound was just the most incredible problem. I mean, it, I felt like all of the traffic from the main road was rerouted through my head in one ear and out the other. Ironically, it was also nine years ago that as a teenager, Michelle Wills noticed a curious illness in animals and people around her hometown of Taree in northern New South Wales. Oh, the rain's done wonders. Look at the pasture. It's incredible. Because I grew up in the country, I did notice that ticks in this, in this area are a particular problem and a lot of dogs and cats were becoming infected. Chronic fatigue sort of symptoms were very common in this area and sore joints, aching muscles, those sort of non-specific symptoms were very common in this area. How did it click with you that what you were seeing was perhaps Lyme disease? When I started to read about Lyme disease, I realised that there were so many similarities between the actual symptoms of Lyme disease as observed in the Northern Hemisphere to what I could see around here by people who had been bitten by ticks and animals who had been bitten by ticks and I thought perhaps there was a correlation between the two. In the summer of 1975, 39 children from the American town of Lyme were struck by a mysterious illness. It seemed to be rheumatoid arthritis, but doctors later discovered the children all had tick bites and characteristic red rashes or lesions on their bodies. It was found the ticks carried a bacteria or spirochete and that this is the cause of Lyme disease in America. It's a little corkscrew organism, it looks like a little snake. Uh, it's a bacteria, so it's bacterial size. It's, it's related to the bacteria that causes uh, syphilis, and it can only be seen if you actually look at it, looking down the microscope at a tissue specimen or some blood or, or a culture of the organism. The Lyme disease spirochete is called Borrelia burgdorferi, but until Michelle Wills came along, no one had proved it existed in Australia. You have to say that is the most important finding in concerning Lyme disease in Australia. This is the paralysis tick, one of many Michelle collected and worked on in her own time. Evenings she'd leave her full-time job and work in the lab, with no funding and initially only tentative support. Originally when I started the project I just did it off my own back, but then I realised I really need some academic support because I was a nobody. So I went to Richard Barry, who has been great. Well, I thought that it was uh, an, an ambitious and, uh, and an interesting idea. I didn't really hold out very high hopes of success. But within a very short period of time, she said, I have cultured ticks, I have cultures. They're mixed cultures, they've got other bacteria in them, but they've got spirochetes in them. It was extremely exciting. Um, no one else had actually found spirochetes in ticks in Australia at that time. And um, when I showed Richard, my supervisor, um, like, it was a very exciting time for the laboratory, although there was still a lot of work to do at that stage. While Michelle and her colleagues worked to refine the discovery, Terry Moore remained in a no-man's land, suffering endless misdiagnoses. You know, I went through a long period where I was diagnosed with having ME or chronic fatigue syndrome, and that was, I mean, that's very difficult because the diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome is a, fairly much a void. It is also saying, we don't really know what's wrong with you, but these are all things you haven't got. I think their final diagnosis was pain of unknown origin. You know, my GP finally told me that, and he said, well, at least they were honest. Oh, what's that? Oh, look at this, a paralysis tick. It is a paralysis tick. Most of us are familiar with ticks. In Australia, they're a way of life. 
We pull them off our animals, our pets, even ourselves, without a second thought. So it's perhaps hard to imagine that for some people, a simple tick bite can bring years of unexplained illness. Did you get your injection today? Get your antibiotic injection today? No. They didn't, okay, all right. Well, today will be the fifth one. That means we've got um, 25 days left after that. Do you think you can take that all right? She has been very bad to the point where she was unable to get out of bed for two or three days at a time. Um, cried a lot with pain from joint inflammation. She um, hasn't been able to walk for distances for quite a while now, so I've had to push her in a wheelchair. Like the children from Lyme in America, eight-year-old Holly Bottle was first diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. It was only a chance hearing about the latest research that brought Holly and her mother to infectious disease specialist Dr Bernie Hudson and the final diagnosis of Lyme disease. How surprised were you when you found out that it was a tick? Very surprised, yeah. Stunned really. Um, I remember it was very small, about the size of a pinhead and she'd had it on her back and it had been there maybe a couple of days and become itchy. The other parts of the face Clearly, Lyme disease is an elusive illness. It has a chameleon quality which makes diagnosis extremely difficult. Neck muscles, they still very fragile. People can develop almost any symptom you can imagine. It can affect actually the heart, where they get inflammation around their heart. It can affect their nervous system, so they can get a meningitis or an inflammation of their nervous system. Um, and it can also affect the joints. But there is one telltale symptom common among all sufferers. These red rashes or lesions. What I can trace back for that nine years are the lesions on my face, which, I mean, it's quite ironic. Now they appear to be the most significant sort of Thing, but at the time, you know, these spots would come and go and I really didn't take much notice of them. She's had a really big lesion on her back, almost where, on the site where the tick was. And it was sort of like a big red rash with a big sort of little bit darker in the middle of it. We knew we had a breakthrough as recently as about a week ago when we discovered that the microbe that we've been characterising actually is structurally very similar, if not identical, to the classical Lyme disease causing agent that occurs in North America. This looks good. The spans fairly clear. Yeah, it's pretty promising actually. They look fairly similar, your isolate and the Northern Hemisphere isolates, don't they? We're fairly confident that the strains that we have will be useful in developing a test which is very accurate in diagnosing patients in Australia and it won't be a matter of months before we can probably do that. Michelle's work is very important because without the bacteria that causes Lyme disease in Australia, uh, it's very difficult to develop a good blood test for Lyme disease. The Lyme disease spirochetes are notoriously hard to track down. Sometimes they show up in the blood, but more often they don't. So getting a diagnosis is purely a matter of chance. The patient has to come across a doctor who firstly is aware of the symptoms and secondly is prepared to order the go-ahead for treatment on what is basically a hunch. Terry Moore and Holly Bottle are lucky, but there could be hundreds out there who are not so fortunate. Pushing up time, Jay. Do you want to come and help me dry? Okay. Okay. You know, all of a sudden there was this sort of little bug I could actually sort of latch onto. It's just so exciting to think that he was something that could be treated. It was like a jigsaw coming together. All these funny odds and sorts, bits and pieces seemed to, to relate to this thing called Lyme disease. And I kept thinking, this is just, this doesn't happen to me. I'm the one that doesn't find out what's wrong with them, you know, and all of a sudden here there is this thing and the possibility of treatment and the idea of recovery. I still haven't quite got my head around that. 
Incredibly, while Michelle and her colleagues have been working largely in their spare time, there is another team which has official recognition to study Lyme disease. And the ones in the Port Macquarie area, they're OK. I looked at them yesterday and they seem to be quite good. It's based in the medical entomology unit at Sydney's Westmead Hospital and has received about $120,000 in funding. If they really do have really Bergdorferi, that is the infecting agent which is causing the disease, it's the only discovery. <laughs> is that I mean, a bit embarrassing then for this unit, given that you have funding and they don't? Well, no. Um, we, we applied for funding on the basis that we would go out and look for this. Uh, at the time we, we did that, nobody had yet found it, nobody was looking for it. Uh, they started to look within the year from the time that we applied until the time that we got it. Um, in fact, they got it just before we actually started our work, but we had applied 12 months previously for the funding. I'm a young scientist, I'm only 25. I haven't had any great scientific discoveries in the past, so I guess I'm jealous, if anything. Um, I can only spend a very little bit of time on my project because I have to work as well. And because we have no funding, it just means that we don't have access to a lot of media requirements. We, we don't get to go to conferences um, to learn more things about Lyme disease. And it does make it very difficult, particularly when we are getting the results, but we aren't getting the money. Michelle is now cooperating with Dr Hudson and his colleagues at Sydney's Royal North Shore Hospital to develop a Lyme disease test as soon as possible. At Westmead, Dr Russell admits that's not their priority. What we set out to do was to find ticks to see whether they were carrying spirochetes which might be causing the disease and if those spirochetes could be shown to cause the disease those spirochetes could be used to improve the tests to the end that yes it's helpful for the patients but that is not what our project was about. So you haven't got funding to find a test, that's not the imperative no. of your study? Shouldn't it be? Well, I'm, I'm not, it's not my area of, of research, it's not my area of expertise. Maybe someone else should have gone and asked for that, yes, but that's not what we asked for. While Westmead's study is relevant, it's hard to understand why funding isn't forthcoming for Michelle. She collected the ticks, isolated the spirochetes, and with help, will develop the test. Like her approach, the treatment for Lyme disease is straightforward. In the chronic stages, it takes intravenous antibiotics, but if caught early, all you need is an oral dose. That's why the test is crucial, so that all those who have this mysterious illness will be spared unnecessary suffering. I feel like I sort of know what it is to be old. I feel like I've gone from being a young person to, to pretty much understanding what it's like to be an old person. Hopefully I'm going to go back and rediscover the middle bit.